NVIDIA GPUs power the great majority of gaming PCs, but AMD's ability to provide closely integrated Ryzen CPUs and Radeon GPUs has gained it many clients and a lot of income. For more integrated game systems like consoles and handhelds, the most noteworthy is Valve's Steam Deck, which combines a Zen 2-based CPU with RDNA 2-based GPU cores to give enough performance for most games. Even though AMD created the Steam Deck CPU solely for Valve, the firm today announced a pair of Ryzen chips geared towards the rising number of alternative portable handhelds from other companies on the market today. The Ryzen Z1 and Z1 Extreme Processors Today, we are going to look at everything these new flagship chips offer. Before we get into the video, please be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Now let's get into it. The Ryzen Z1 Extreme combines 8 AMD Zen 4 CPU cores and 16 threads with 12 RDNA 3 graphics cores and 24 MB of cache. It promises up to 8.6 teraflops of raw graphic performance, which is much closer to the 10.28 teraflops of a Sony PlayStation 5 than the 1.6 teraflops of a Steam Deck. Meanwhile, the standard Ryzen Z1 has 6 CPU cores and 12 threads, 4 GPU cores, and 22 MB of cache, enough for a theoretical 55% boost in raw graphics capabilities over Valve's special Zen 2 Plus RDNA 2 Aerith architecture. What does this signify for video games? AMT claims that if you play at 720 but low settings on a Z1 Extreme, you can cross the 60 frames per second line for games as demanding as Red Dead Redemption 2 and more than double that for Forza Horizon 4, all upscaled to 1080 put AMD's Radiant Super Resolution. The Z1 gives up the advantage in some of the more challenging games, but the stats aren't awful. I believe what's going on here is that the limiting factor is the LPDDR5, not the CUS, explains AMD Senior Technical Marketing Manager Don Wolligroski. In many of these cases, fast memory is what these games are hungry for. These benchmarks, by the way, aren't from some enormous bench-mounted testbed. They're from an advanced engineering sample of the Asus ROG Ally mobile gaming PC, which Wolligroski ran personally. According to Asus representative Esther So, the Ally will be available in both Z1 and Z1 Extreme variants. We have a video talking about the Asus ROG Ally and all its features. We will link it in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. But before you declare the ROG Ally Steam Deck killer, Consider the TDP. Wolligroski claims that all these benchmarks were run in the Alley's turbo mode, which allows the CPU to draw up to 30 watts depending on the game. With its 40 watt hour battery, the Steam Deck CPU works at half that speed and can often last two hours in all but the most demanding games. It may not matter whether the ROG Alley has a significantly larger battery or performs competently at the same 15 watts. AMD also claims that the Z1 and Z1 Extreme support Radiant Chill, which can save power based on frame rate targets of your choice, and that the Alley has its frame limiter. Remember this when you analyze the performance charts that AMD has released. AMD claims the Z1 and Z1 Extreme are now unique to Asus, but we may see more partners with these or subsequent Z processors in the future. The Z Portable Gaming PC identity is here to stay. It is now a collaboration between AMD's gaming division, which handles Radeon GPUs, and the client, which handles Ryzen CPUs. Wolderbrowski is unable to comment on the Ryzen 7840U, a CPU that seems to be a dead ringer for the Z1 Extreme and might come in any number of competitor boutique mobile gaming PCs in place of the Z1. We haven't officially announced any parts from the 7000U series yet. It wants us to know that the Z1 isn't just a rebranding of future laptop parts and that it employs bespoke power and voltage curves, among other things. According to AMD, Asus will provide further information regarding the ROG Ally on May 11. Check out our channel for more videos on the Asus ROG Ally. We are keeping up with the latest news and leaks regarding this highly anticipated handheld. Though Ryzen Z1 based handhelds should outperform the Steam Deck in terms of overall performance, Valve's Steamos may still have a competitive edge. Other portable PCs, such as the AVA Neo, have launched with Windows, which has excellent game compatibility but its mouse and keyboard-centric user interface isn't well-suited to small-screen handhelds. Some Microsoft developers have tried a handheld mode that might fix some of these issues, but we don't know when or if it will be released. The new AMD Z1 series of chips may just revolutionize the handheld game, but it all depends on whether or not AMD open their doors to collaborate with other handheld producers. Personally, I can't wait to get my hands on an ROG Ally due to its beastly rumored performance. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Anyway, that's all from us today, guys, on AMD's brand new Ryzen Z1 and Z1 Extreme. 
Please be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content like this.